Hi, my name is Dean Madden. I'm a professor in the biochemistry department and we use a combination of biochemical and structural techniques to study how ion channels are regulated in cells. So it turns out that um, most, almost all of the work that's done in our lab is driven by graduate students. We currently have five students in the lab. We regularly have rotation students. We uh, typically have somewhere around one to two postdocs and research technicians and then usually also one to two undergraduate students in the lab at any time. And uh, this is a sort of, a, I think, a nice mix. Uh, the, uh, the graduate students can, throughout their career, take on increasing responsibility, um, first working with, uh, you know, with me or with a postdoc primarily, and then as they become more independent, supervising undergraduates um, and then doing that with increasing independence. The postdocs can you know, provide some, some training opportunities, but often come from other areas, and so they're often learning from the graduate students as well. And so, you know, again, that kind of emphasizes uh, the central role of the graduate students in the lab. One of the most important things for, uh, for graduate students, PhD students in particular, is that they need to be trained to become independent scientists. And so the mentoring process needs to be a combination of providing advice and support and training and also allowing students to have the freedom and independence to develop as independent scientists. Um, and so that's actually a balancing act that, that uh, I think is, is really important. And again, there's a continuum of, uh, of, of de progression. As a, when a graduate student comes into the lab, they often uh, will need training because we do specialized techniques that are not often available in undergraduate labs. But as they become more familiar with those, I encourage them to uh, become increasingly independent. The most critical decision that a graduate student makes is actually the choice of their research lab. Um, their, the, your success and your training uh, in, in research skills prepares you to do whatever future career you're going to do. Um, I think the critical decision um, it is finding a faculty member whose style matches well with yours and whose research is exciting to you. And you really need to get both of those components in alignment in order to, uh, to have this be a successful relationship. At Dartmouth, you, you sort of get the best of both worlds. Um, you have the research infrastructure and the quality of faculty that you would find at a large research university. You also have relatively small groups so that you're interacting directly and usually daily with your primary uh, faculty mentor. So you get the supervision, the interaction, the collegiality uh, the, of a small uh, research environment, and yet you have the ac access to the resources of a really large university. Um, <clears throat> I think a particularly important component of that is the fact that the labs at Dartmouth are also highly collaborative. We've published with um, and work with at least half a dozen groups on campus. Um, that many universities will tell you that they do that, but at Dartmouth it's really true, and you can look for evidence of co-publication as a basis for, for evaluating it. What that gives students is an opportunity to explore techniques that are outside of the core expertise of the lab that they're in at the same high level, but without having to go into a large, more anonymous uh, graduate laboratory.